Hello, Shining Tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Shining Force 3 Scenario 1 with me, Blue Ankylo. Probably just going to call it Shining Force 3 a lot of the times, but early on I want to distinguish where we are. So anyway, last episode we just started, we learned a little bit about the plot of the, the setup of the game, but uh, now we got to explore the city of Saraband, and we have to keep our eyes open for masked monks along the way. Uh, so some guy's just been taking care of doves instead of going on dates with his girlfriend? Crazy! His doves are amazingly smart and useful. Yeah, that's, that's nice. At least that'll explain a little bit about how, uh, cities in a medieval era can communicate with each other, unlike some games where it's just magic. Fire Emblem. Oh, Garrosh! I was born in a poor village in the Republic. I ran away with my brothers in search of a no better life and joined the Saraband Guard. Now I'm healthy, wealthy, and happy. Huh. So, uh, just because they have a, an avatar and a fancy name with color, doesn't mean I get to recruit them. Yet. <laughs> well, I assume this is where the negotiations is, are occurring. Maybe, maybe not. So... The era before the Republic seceded from the Empire. When Domeric came to power, laws to divide nobility from the middle class were passed, and we're living with the result. So we're living in a country that seceded from an old Empire. The Empire then invaded when we had rebels, and the Republic is a little bit less, uh, maybe, um, less focused on nobility. Hey, <laughs> five gold coins! Oh yeah, I met your sister out there. Garrosh has two brothers. One is the commander of the Saraband Guard, and his younger brother is in the Republican Army. He's assigned to the countryside. Huh, I wonder if we'll get one in every scenario. Mm, yes. We left the Empire and became citizens of Saraband. Your father and other Republican pioneers fought impossible odds against Emperor Domeric's terrifying army, but succeeded in founding their own country. There you go, it's not that complicated. Come on, give me some goodies. Nothing. Still nothing. You never know where they're gonna hide something in this game. Alright, it's so got some guards in here. I wouldn't recommend near going near the West District of Saraband. Although it's not well known in the Republic, there are far more Imperial soldiers in Saraband than Republican soldiers. Right. Come on. Let me check that barrel. It could be goodies. Dystonia really needs Saraband, because there's no way to tell how long the conference will take. There's no reason why the Emperor needed to bring his three sons here. They must have had nothing better to do. <laughs> yeah, well. It's important peace negotiations. Kids gotta learn somewhere, right? Before the peace conference, we agreed to equip only light weapons, but I feel kind of nervous. What do you think? I don't know. I don't have really very good weapons either, to be honest. The barracks in Saraband's East District houses the Saraband Guard. To the West is the Private Guard barracks. The Private Guards are elite soldiers, but they're jerks! If you meet them, you'll understand. Alright, well, keep exploring around town. Now, East and West might be difficult to work out immediately. Um, I think... If you press the, the re realign, I assume it aligns us north. You know, like I press one button, it sends me to this direction. So then maybe East is to the right and left is to the north of, of that angle. But I'm not 100% sure. So we'll just keep looking around. So this is the flower girl. I've already got some. Most men think more about swords and spears than flowers and beauty. You should stop and spend some time admiring the flowers. Even during battle, it may prove useful. Ah, you're crazy. K-word? I roamed the world as a mercenary searching for a master archer and ended up here, ended up here in Saraband. I liked it so much I joined the Saraband Guard. However, I'm thinking of moving on again. You know. Why not? 
The elegant trading center in the Central District represents the face of the modern city, Saraband. The Republican and Imperial camps in the East and West districts were originally citizens' homes. Oh, you got just kicked out, I guess. Saraband has four districts. Two residential, a central business district, and a government district to the south. The steam plants allow it to travel over the sea. Can you imagine that? It's unique. Is this like a floating city that can travel around? That's pretty cool. Didn't even notice that. No wonder both the Republic and the Empire would like it. Don't have to expect doors. You just walk right through. Hmm. His husband was recruited by the Serban Guard. Sure, sure. Military men usually enjoy high standing, but our, unfortunately merchants have the power here. Well, I'm sure he can uh, make some money in the army. You don't want to be just strong. You want to be adept in math? Oh, man. It's all right. If, you know, just because your dad's a, a, an army guy doesn't mean you have to be an army guy. Mother says to marry a merchant. <laughs> All right, I see the priorities in this family. I would still like a strong, attractive... But you're like, you're just a little kid. What are you talking? Well, maybe she's a teenager or something. Already looking forward to attractive military men. Friendships on the battlefield. When fighting in groups, it is through helping each other that victory is born. Bonds of trust amplify battle strength. Yeah, I talked about that a little bit last episode. And it shut. Aw. Oh. Well, they got quite the bathroom. <laughs> this wasn't in Shining Force 2. Alright. I think I've explored everything in here for now. Lots of little houses like that, but there are, like... I, I do remember that there are, like, rare items that you can find searching around. Just like Shining Force 2. Can I get in here? Open this one up. Shut tight. Apparently they lock their shelves quite if, quite well. Oops. Fighting styles for the weak. By the scholars of Saraband, pick a foe who has been weakened by a stronger fighter and never face the enemy alone. Sure. Seems reasonable, right? Apparently nothing in that box. Emperor Domeric of the Empire is visiting. I plan to stay in my house till he leaves. <laughs> the Empire pushed policies based on feudalism and stole the dreams of common people. The Republic, which is based on equality, is plagued with budgetary hardships. So Saraband really is the ideal nation. Oh, I guess Saraband might be like a neutral ground. Fair enough. You've got the Empire on one side and the Republic on the other. I gotcha. Yeah, there. thanks, old lady. Saraband became a permanent neutral country because Emperor Domeric permitted it. It's considered to be one of the seven wonders of the continent. Well, the fact that it's a floating city is pretty cool. However, I wonder why he allows a country like this to exist. Because you could just sail off, go park your city somewhere else, probably. Can I talk to you yet? Oh, right. Do you like Saraband? Um, yeah, you know, actually it floats. It's pretty cool. I thought so. It's quite a sight, isn't it? Because of the wisdom and foresight of Governor Garvin, Saraband's leader, the area is flourishing. He established Saraband as a neutral trading country. Cool. Also must have known something about building floating cities. So this must be like some merchant's house, right? Oh, or he's an engineer under Governor Garvin. He created the power that allows Saraband to move. That's cool. Others in the town of Quonus are supposedly researching steam-powered armor. Oh, yeah, I know a thing or two about them. Off, off, wink, nudge, guns. What am I doing? Tap the C button. If you don't find anything, press the B button. My husband spends all the time on research for the governor, but access to the mansion is restricted due to the conference. 
thought I'd get to spend some time with him, but all he does is read. You know, engineers, right? It feels cool in there. Okay. And that one is shut tight. And these little boxes have been less than, uh... Oh, oh! We found the large mithril, guys! I needed to find this before I did anything else. So, happily, I did find it. I forgot, you know, I don't know where all the stuff is. I just know that they exist. So, um... If you're really unfamiliar with, uh... Shining Force games... You can use Mithril to forge some of the best weapons in the game. Now, I forget in Shining Force 3 if it's the best, but it's probably still worth picking some up. There are some pretty cool, unique weapons. Why doesn't anyone care how this... I mean, I care. Curiosity is the driving force behind the development of technology and civilization. Otherwise, we are no better than beasts, don't you? Yeah, sure I do, why not? Harness the power of steam! The pressure caused by evaporating water can be utilized to change our entire life. Wonder if you've got any steam trains? I bet you will find a train later. Okay, I got my large mithril. There's probably some more stuff. Is this gate locked? Shut tight. So that's going to be like, maybe the government district, maybe, in the middle there? Let's go the long way around. If this old man will get out of my way. Some things never change. People getting your way. In the back of this house. We got a nice yard. I, I live in this house. Fence in a yard. Did you see the three princes? No. The youngest prince, Median, is kind and extremely attractive. The eldest, Majoron is the spoiled one, and Arant is downright strange. If Majoron or Arant take over the Empire, the country will crumble. Well, there's no way that it'll go to the third son, right? It's gonna go to the first, almost assuredly. I know succession law. My daughter-in-law snuck off to see the princes. I don't know why she can't stay home while my son's at work. Every girl in this game is fantasizing about princes and military men. I get ya. Oh! Just a rat. <laughs> Lady, you need to get a cat. I don't want to live here anymore. Planning weapon proficiency. Take into account the various weapon types. Choose the weapon type that's best suits you and use it in battle to develop your skill. Now, I think most characters just have like one type they can equip. Maybe it's two types they can equip and you just sort of pick one and work at it. I forget. Still a couple more houses to explore. No big deal. Now, I know I found the Mithril, the, the really important thing. But there could be more goodies. Neutral cities are the gateway to a new era. Written by Garvin. Isn't that the guy that, like, owns the city? <laughs> Adopting ideologies of both the Empire and the Republic, Saraband has become a neutral trading partner. Now, of course, the guy that runs it and is probably stupidly wealthy and pays no taxes to either country. Yeah, he likes the idea of having a neutral city, of course. Do I know about the apartments in the east and west? No, I know nothing about that. Those buildings were made for single people. All unmarried people must live there. We are only allowed to live in a single unit home after marrying. I wonder what would happen if everyone got married at once. Well... I suppose space would be quite limited on a floating city. You can't really expand very well. Okay, five gold coins. Like, I guess you could build up a bit, but you can't really expand in the way most cities expand. There's kind of a limit to how many houses fit. So I guess I could see some sort of population control, but it sounds a little weird. You gotta live in bunk beds until you get married. If there's an ability to get married because there's not enough houses available. I don't know, maybe that's a little creepy. The Papa's a great merchant? Good for you, kid. Merchants rule, soldiers drool. Conglomerate of territories with their own agenda. It's typical Republic stuff. The better you are in business, the more you have. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, guys, I'm trying to skip through this a little bit to save some time, because, like, I need to get going here. Can't spend, like, five episodes in the first city. Um. Seems to be a lot of 
contention between the military district and the merchant district. Well, good for your family, I guess. No, I don't want to talk to you. Get out of my way, old man. Get out of my way. Go. Oh, read your books. Benefits of a mobile city, I'm sure you can imagine. A mobile city can move away, can move with seasonal changes. So it's always experience, it, it always experiences favorable weather. Sure, that's great. Something's there. Or there seem to be. I remember a lot of these sort of joke chests, actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, honestly, if you're on a floating city, if the Empire brought an army, couldn't you just float away? <laughs> like, what are they going to do? I guess if they had a naval blockade or something. Alright, this is where we came from. Can I go through this gate? Of course I can. More city to explore, oh boy! Don't worry, there won't be that many huge cities. There's only a, as far as I remember, there's only a couple gigantic cities you have to spend a ton of time- well, you can spend a bunch of time exploring. The governor prohibited the sale of weapons during the peace conference, so the weapon businesses are hurting pretty bad. I went to the weapon shop to look around, and it's dead. The whole sales floor was empty. Wow. Since King Benetrim is such a great strategist, the Empire is taking every precaution. Some soldiers are acting quite aggressively, saying they should have, they should make the first move. Better watch out for yourself. Just because we're from the Republic, you think the, Imper the Imperial soldiers are going to attack us? But I've got the great Don Therese, the amazing um, knight. I guess this is one of those weapon dealers. Can I uh, steal any of your stuff? Like, I I'd buy some from you if I had more than 10, 15 gold. Can I talk to- do you get different if you talk to him back here? No. I do remember in this game, just like Shining Force 2, if you spend your mithril once you get to a blacksmith, this guy might even be a blacksmith, you get different items depending on random luck, and I remember messing around with that a lot too. Just like in Shining Force 2. Nobody knows what anyone is thinking. The Republic, or the Saraband is for supporting the Republic cause. Well, I think the Republic would be more interested in peace and trade rather than the imper Imperial way of nobles first. So we can buy supplies. But uh, I don't think I need any of these. I suppose I need to find a church and save it eventually, too. Oh, was there any other options here? Just double check. So we can repair broken stuff, sell stuff. Maybe there's some deals. No. Alright. I think that's sorted. What about your chest? Your shelf? She just learned how to lock her shelf. I guess I, I probably won't get anything from talking to her from behind the shelf, behind the counter. Other than kicked out. Have you seen the trading center? Uh, is that what we're standing in front of? Right, so yeah, merchants are having a hard time during the peace negotiations. I get it. This must be the, the trading center. Just give it a few days, come on. You know, as soon as the conference is over, I'm sure business will pick up. You guys should just stop stressing out. Balsamo, yeah, I am starting to wonder about those masked monks. I keep hearing about them. War equals opportunity for merchants, well, yeah. Oh! Just a rat. Just, just a rat? Ew. Um. It's funny how some people think the merchants will do well in the war and some think they'll go bankrupt. I guess it just depends on how secure your trade lines are. All merchants must check in here to import or export from Saraban. Sure, that's great. You've got, like, import tariffs. I guess that'd be how a trading city makes money. That, that's Anything hiding back here? Nobody's hiding behind the trading center. No. 
I guess... See, it is worth checking these boxes because sometimes you find stuff. But most of them are empty. Uh, what is... There's a... I'm gonna call the police. There's a bouncing egg. That's terrible. Keep it away. No, I want to look in this shelf. Come on. Three dimensions. Yeah, we were up to 25 gold. It says different things. It's a talking bouncing egg. That's, that's great. Well, I'm sure we'll never see anything like that ever again. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so I think the bridge, probably, this is the way out. Yeah. Look, man. I just want to talk to people. I just want to be friendly. So we could go through that gate. I think that leads to the government district. This is probably the church, right? Just a little church. Yeah, you know. Gold, gold, gold. Yeah. It is a trading city. You're rich but have no soul, but you have a big church. Don't you feel better? It's good to pray for peace, but sometimes peace doesn't come simply by praying. Or your diplomats to negotiate for peace. You could try that. <laughs> Make me rich, amen. You could try. Elbasem is a guardian deity, you say? Oh yes, I know. He's also omnipotent and all-knowing. <laughs> There's a fair bit of merchant greed, for sure. Wartime is when we merchants prosper. Which is... Which to pray... <laughs> Should I pray for peace or war? It's, it's, fu it's funny though. Some of the merchants would disagree. Alright. So, um... In standard Shining Force fashion, once we're at level... 10? 20? One of those. Probably 20. Can promote to new classes. We can cure diseases and stuff, and he can revive dead people. Now, the way the support system works is, if people die, they lose a level of of uh, support with everybody or friendship so it's actually a good idea to pr avoid that if you can or else you uh, sort of nerf your characters anyway I would like to at least make one save just uh, a new slot's fine on the system so that I can import it later on because you can't import your saves from scenario 1, 2, and 3 thank you I will indeed continue uh, okay. Please, let me finish exploring this town in this episode. That's my prayer. Because <laughs> I need some excitement in this let's play. I can't just be talking to people forever. Have I been to the item shop? Yes. Sure. Whenever young Imperial soldiers are off duty, they just loaf in the bar. They need to get a life! Oh, on the other hand, they are easygoing and fun-loving. Yeah, 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 you don't want to get arrested, probably. The leader of the Republic, King Benetrem, who we just met, is a great strategist in general. No way he'll give up Baran so easily. Ah, hopefully he's got a plan. Just looking for secrets. So we got another gate. Um, we got a bar. I assume, right? Or a cafe, maybe? Probably depends on what translation you're playing. Who's this suspicious fellow? Ah, I don't know what I'm going to do! <laughs> My poor food. I'm sure the trading will go back to normal as soon as the conference is over. It's not going to take all year. Besides, don't the soldiers and the citizens still need to eat? Just sell your food, man. It's only a restriction on weapons. Smart group fighting. One way to break the morale of your enemies is to defeat their leader. Identify the enemy leader immediately and then you don't get any experience because everyone else runs away. Terrible idea. Oh, there is a chest. I didn't even see that. And some health bread. Ooh. Chances are that's permanent HP increase. Oops, not that. 
I want to go to items. Not actually going to use it just yet. But we have some health bread, which raises your max HP. So, uh, yeah, like, I'll probably give that to, like, the mage or the healer because they have lower HP and they could use it. It probably has a range, like, two to four. So depending on your luck, you'll get a different amount of bonus stats. Could probably save it and reload until you uh, got what you wanted. Oh, a little cut through. So someone doing laundry, is his name Arthur? I'm not a coward. I just grew tired of making a living by killing people. I'm making ends meet by doing laundry. And I found it's not a bad alternative. And that sounds like a terrible idea. Ha! You're still a young pup. It's understandable that you would disagree. However, I wonder if you will still feel that way after many years of fighting. Someday, I'd like your answer again. I think that's supposed to be Arthur. <laughs> you know, the magical knight that did a lot of laundry in Shining Force 2. <laughs> or 1, actually. That wasn't even 2. Yeah, that was that was Shining Force 1. Hey, get down. Job is to report to Railhead about deals that are made at the trading center. Yeah, not much to do, so you just hang out at the bar. Got a day off. Well, hello, stranger! Oh, yeah. You're just my type. Wow! <laughs> Man, we're off to a good start at this bar. S sitting around and drinking is bad for the legs. So you just run to Bell Samo, sure. It's centaurs, right? It looks like you're not constantly working right now. So, Imperial soldiers, huh? Uh-huh. Prince Majoron is a very good person. Says you. Says not other people. Rumor is the Republic's planning a riot? I haven't heard anything about that. That's crazy talk. Prince Arant is tense and nervous. Don't get me started about his assistant general, Crowart. Anyone with Wart in their name is a bad guy, right? Yeah, everyone wants to be in Prince Midian's army. Oh, the the beautiful General Spiriel. We'll never run into her, don't worry about it. Besides being beautiful, her battle and command skills are superb. Spiriel, hey? Remember that name for later. You seem respectable, but you're here during the day to drink. No, I'm here to pick up girls. <laughs> anyway, I think that covers the bar. I guess we got a date later on if nothing happens. That's fun. But when will this exploration phase ever end, is the question you're asking. Blue, we've been watching you for two episodes. And we still haven't seen any battle. Well, my dear YouTubesters, it won't be long. Heading into the Imperial District. This is the headquarters of the Imperial Army. It's off limits to weak Republican dogs. Didn't, don't you know that? Never heard of that. You don't seem to understand the relationship between the Empire and the Republic. Barand and the Republic used to be part of the Empire. When you defected, you took our property. That's why anger remains. King ben well, okay, the Imperial people really don't like King Benetrim. If this peace conference fails, and he finds out Emperor Domric will not return Barand, what ploy will he use next? Apparently a riot, if you believe the rumors. Uh, yes, yes I am. My father was a highly respected Imperial general that betrayed them and defected to the Republic. Thank you, father. Oh, hi guys. What? No, just going for a walk? This is looking rather grim, Grace. What's so grim about it, Republican soldiers? I'm just exploring. I think we've come to a bad place. I think we should uh, turn around now. 
Oh no! Wait a second! You people must be spies. You think we'd let spies escape so easily? Uh... You come to the Imperial District and think you can get away with it? I think we need to beat some sense into your thick skulls. Um... Hey! I don't like your tone. Are you challenging us? Dantres, take him out! You actually think you're worthy enough to fight us? Ha! You think you can fight us on our own turf and still win? Not think. I know. Alright, let's do it. There's only one way to find out. Prepare to learn how hard it is to win a battle when you've lost an arm or two. Heh <laughs> heh Alright, hold it right there. Uh, you must be Sir Campbell of the Empire, and I believe you are the Emperor's son, Prince... Yes, I am, Medion. That gentleman over there is Sir Danderez. Some say he is even stronger than I. <laughs> even stronger than Sir Campbell? Boy, did we choose the wrong guy to pick a fight with. I won't try to stop you, but if I were you, I wouldn't fight him. So. What will you do? Well, it seems you have been quite rude to these people. I wonder if they will forgive you. Hmm, nope. Sinbios wants to, but Dantres wants to kill them. And the Imperial Guards run away. They bravely ran away away. Well. Your timely arrival saved us some unpleasantness. <laughs> Don't mention it. We simply spared a few Imperial soldiers' lives. Glad they know it. It is we, the Imperial Army, who should apologize to you for acting so rudely. Ah, we did barge into their territory. If we keep going on like this with the formalities, we'll be here all day. I saw you fight in the battle at the border a while back, Sir Danteres. I don't look forward to facing you on the battlefield anytime soon. I was about to say the same thing, Sir Campbell. Your reputation in battle precedes you. Is the person next to you by any chance Lord Symbios, the son of Lord Conrad, the Great General? But indeed. Your father is still considered a hero in the Empire, so you are his son. Can't just be a coincidence we have met here like this. Coincidence? Possibly. To tell you the truth, we're investigating some masked monks. Masked monks? Uh-oh. That doesn't sound good at all. I see now. Those explosives were to be used for the attack. Well, that much is obvious. However, for what reason? We don't know what those monks are after yet, but for the moment we should return to our respective camps and assess the damage. Lord Symbios, we must head back. The timing is unfortunate. I think we have much in common. Let's be sure to continue our conversation when we have a chance. The nodding conversation.
let's hurry back to headquarters. In the next episode of Shining Force 3, we will return back to our headquarters and figure out what's happening with the masked monks. <laughs> so thanks for watching, folks. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Sorry about the cliffhanger, but, you know, time limits. <laughs> next episode, I promise there will be some combat. 100% for sure. <laughs> See you guys next time, and have a great day.